White House gets closer to overhauling the nation's tax code. House Republicans passing its plan yesterday. Leadership praising the vote. We've got a long road ahead of us, and we have a timeline to get this done by the end of the year. Our job is not done. The Senate will have to do their work, and we'll come back. And when we finish the job, we make this promise to you. We will come back in a bigger celebration because we have listened to the American public. And the Senate Finance Committee sent its version of the tax bill to the full Senate last night. It will be taken up by lawmakers after Thanksgiving. This morning, the president praised the Republican victories, tweeting this. Great numbers on stocks in the economy. If we get tax cuts and reform, we will really see some great results. If Democrats were not such obstructionists and understood the power of lower taxes, we would be able to get many of the ideas, their ideas, into the bill after House lawmakers passed their own $1.5 trillion dollar tax bill. Joining me right now is the chairman of the White House Council of Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett. Kevin, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us uh, this Good morning. morning, Maria. It's great to be here. Well, this is obviously a, a, a big positive. Do you think this, these bills are going to look very different when the two sides get together in conference after Thanksgiving to really hammer out what this law will look like? Right. Well, there are two paths going forward that are possible. One is that the Senate bill becomes so perfect that the House says, oh, we'll just pass that. And the second is, as you mentioned, that they're quite a bit different. And then they have a conference and they put the pieces together. I think that the president is happy with either path because he thinks both bills achieve his major objectives of a big corporate tax cut, a big middle class tax cut and simplification. And so there's so many details, as you know, and you talk about on the show all the time about how do we deal with uh, small businesses, with S corps and, you know, how do we make our international tax rules, make sure that multinationals can't continue to move the activity offshore. And so the, all those things are being worked out in the committees right now. And there's an excellent staff on both sides of, uh, of their working on it and we look forward to seeing the final product. Yeah, I mean, you know, how do you sell something that basically is going to be raising taxes on some Americans because of the elimination of that deduction? And we know mm -hmm. that this one and a half trillion dollar package, much of it is because of the business taxes, right? The business cuts, $900 billion uh, account for the business cuts, whether it's passed through or the corporate rate right. of 20%. So how do you, what, what, what's the pushback on the argument that you're raising taxes on some Americans as a way to pay for lower taxes on corporations? Right. Well, you know, there are 150 million taxpayers in this world and, and every single one of them has a story. Right. And so there are going to be some special cases where the people have their taxes go up for sure. It, it's going to happen in any tax reform. But the bottom line is that the big three objectives from the beginning from President Trump were a middle class tax cut. You know, check. That's there. Uh, the numbers are big, especially if you look at the expanded child credit. Uh, two, it's a lot simpler because of the big standard deduction. And three, and the part that I've been talking about for 20 years and talking to you about for 20 years, practically, Maria, is the idea that if we cut the corporate tax, then we bring factories home. That increases the demand for workers here in the U.S., and that drives up their wages. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think the corporate tax cut is very powerful, no doubt about yes, it. it. But it you is. do have people pushing back on, on certain elements here. So the late amendment adopted in the Senate Finance Committee's proposal includes changes to the tax treatment of carried interest. Investment mm -hmm. managers would be required to hold assets for at least three years to get lower long-term capital gains. But people are wondering if, in fact, that's enough. I mean, the whole time on the campaign, the president was very clear. Carried interest is unfair. It'll, it enables some, you know, people like hedge fund managers, private equity guys and gals to uh, treat sure. income as capital gains, which is a, much lower than ordinary income at 39.6 percent. So what's the answer? How come more wasn't done on carried interest, sir? Well, the president, again, mindful of the legislative process, had these big three objectives, but he's very pleased to see uh, that they're looking at the carried interest provisions as well. And it is something, as you said, that he's spoken a lot about on the campaign trail. But you have to go back just slightly and look at the bigger picture, that there is an equity and efficiency trade-off everywhere in every tax bill. And there are people in the Senate and people in the House that have different opinions about how you're going to, you know, draw the line. Should we put it here? Should we put it there? And in the end, we need enough votes to get it through the Senate. And last night was a really big victory. You know, it was almost as big a victory as the Celtics over the Warriors last <laughs> night. I mean, <laughs> Celtics fans, sorry, guys. But, but it's a huge victory last night. And uh, there's a lot more work to do. And, and the way it gets through the Senate, though, is that the senators get to express their opinions. So they get to influence the bill. We're going through regular order. You don't have to you know, vote for it before you can see it. And, and that's why we're watching this process go as it really was intended to by the founding fathers.